Hi, I'm Mark Wilsdorf here to talk about accounting for resale items in farm and ranch businesses in QuickBooks. This is a common need if you buy livestock you expect to resell later, such as stocker cattle or feeder pigs, but the same ideas and techniques also apply to most other farm ranch resale items, like merchandise you might buy to resell through a farmer's market stand or maybe a direct to consumer meat shop. Resale items are described on the IRS Schedule F tax form as livestock and other resale items. Basically, resale items are anything you buy for the purpose of reselling in the farm business, with a few exceptions noted in the Farmer's Tax Guide. From an accounting standpoint, the important thing to know is that the IRS does not let you deduct the purchase cost of resale items when you pay for them. Instead, you only get to deduct their purchase cost when the items are sold, which may or may not be in the same tax year as when they were bought. For example, you might buy weaned calves in the fall to grow over the winter and resell in the spring. If you're a calendar year taxpayer then, the purchase and sale of the calves would happen in two different tax years. If you've ever had to look up old purchase tickets to figure out which purchase costs apply to the resale items you sold during the current year, you know it can be a messy, complicated, and hair-pulling job. That's especially true if you buy and resell a lot of different things, or if some resale group purchases overlap the timing of sales from other groups, as is often the case with feeder livestock. Fortunately, QuickBooks has features that are specifically designed for resale item accounting. In fact, it automates the job so well that you may be surprised at how easy it is. If you set up and use those features the right way, a single report will give you resale item sale and purchase cost totals at the end of the year for tax purposes. You'll be spending minutes, not hours, coming up with the information you need. Okay, a few things to know before we get started. First, we'll be working with an example for resale livestock, specifically resale stocker cattle. Now, stocker cattle are young cattle purchased to grow on grass, hay, or some other forage-based diet until they're big enough to be resold to go to a cattle feedlot. But again, the same accounting steps we will be talking about apply to anything you buy to resell. So whenever I say resale livestock or stocker cattle, realize that the discussion applies to other kinds of resale items in the same way. Second, I assume you use cash basis accounting, which is true for most farmers and ranchers. The ideas are the same if you file taxes on an accrual basis, but some of the details are different, so we won't be discussing those here. Third, I'll be working in the QuickBooks Accountant Edition, but the steps would be identical in any of the QuickBooks Desktop Editions, including Pro, Premier, and Enterprise. If you use QuickBooks Online instead, you can easily adapt the example to that software. The basic steps will be the same, but the terms, menu commands, and screens will be different. For example, the item list in the desktop editions is called the Products and Services list in QuickBooks Online. I still prefer the desktop editions for farm and ranch accounting. They are superior to QuickBooks Online for many of the things farmers and ranchers need to do, especially for keeping track of stored grain, market livestock, and even fixed assets. But that's discussion for another time and place. Finally, I'll be working in a QuickBooks company file that I use for examples and testing, not a file for a real farm business. So if you see any strange looking accounts, items, or transactions, please ignore them. They're probably just leftovers from some QuickBooks idea I was trying out on another day. I've set up the accounts and items we will be using in this sample file, so let's have a look at those. You need to set up at least three accounts in the chart of accounts if you don't have them already. First, you need an income account for recording resale livestock sales. The account must be separate from income accounts for sales of things that you raise, mostly because resale item income is reported separately on income tax forms. You also need an account for expensing the purchase cost of resale items when they're sold, that is, for recording the purchase cost as a deductible expense for the current tax year. There are several different ways to set up this account. It can be a cost of goods sold type account, an expense type account, or a contra income account. And a contra income account is simply an income type account that you use for recording expenses instead of income. You can find a full discussion of those options in volume three of the QuickBooks Farm Accounting Cookbook series. I prefer using a contra income account because it groups income and purchase costs together on profit and loss reports.
Here is the Contra Income account. Note that it is a sub-account of Sales Resale Livestock. Finally, you need an asset account to represent the uh, value of resale livestock on the balance sheet. This account happens to be a sub-account of inventory, but it wouldn't have to be. It could be a standalone account if you prefer that. In QuickBooks, items are simply names or identifiers for things you buy and sell. Using an item in a transaction affects the appropriate accounts. And here we've opened the item list. And here is an item that we're going to look at uh, set up for resale stock or cattle. The item's name is stock or cattle. And it's set up as a sub item of another item called resale. It wouldn't have to be, it could be standalone, but this will group all resale type items together under that one heading of resale. The accounts that are assigned to this item are the ones we've looked at earlier in this example. Uh, the cost of goods sold account is our contra income account called cost of resale livestock. The income account is resale livestock sales and the asset account is a resale livestock asset under inventory. A question to ask is how many items do I need? You need to set up one inventory part item for each type of resale livestock or other kinds of resale items that you deal with. You don't need a new item for every purchase just for every kind of thing you buy to resell. For instance, you might accumulate a group of stock or cattle uh, over several different purchases and you could use the same item for all of those purchases. But if you sometimes also buy other kinds of resale livestock, maybe thin cull cows to be fed out or feeder lambs, you would need to set up different items for each of those. When you buy resale items, the transaction is entered the same as for other purchases, typically as a check, a bill, or credit card charge. But again, you must use the inventory part item to record the purchase. Let's look at a check entered for purchase of 48 stocker cattle. Notice that I entered the quantity and the amount and let QuickBooks calculate the cost or price per head. The quantity is important for a couple of reasons. The quantity you enter in purchase and sale transaction affects the inventory count for the resale stock or cattle item. If you make several purchases, then the item's inventory will reflect the total number of cattle you've purchased, minus the number sold and any sales, of course. Behind the scenes, QuickBooks uses the quantity and the total cost of all purchases to calculate an average cost per head or average cost per unit if you're dealing with something other than livestock. Later when you enter sales, QuickBooks will multiply the sale quantity by the average cost per head to determine how much purchase cost to write off as a cost of items held for resale expense. Let's enter another purchase, this time for 52 calves. These calves were bought on a different day, giving us a total inventory of 100 stocker calves when we're all done. As before, I entered the quantity and the amount and let QuickBooks calculate the cost. 
This is usually the best way to enter purchases of any kind. The reason is that the amount and the quantity are always known, but the exact cost or price may not be. Also, added fees or taxes, for example, can even make the price work out to involve fractional cents, so it's best to let QuickBooks calculate the cost for you. Here we can see that the current inventory for a resale stock or cattle is 100 head. An inventory valuation summary report shows basically the same information plus average cost per head or per unit. Here we can see that there are 100 head on hand and their average cost was $823.74 per head. If we wanted to see all of the transactions behind these numbers, we could open a detailed version of the same report. And here you can see the two purchases that we've entered for 48 head and 52 head of cattle. Now let's see what happens when we enter sales. Sales of resale items must be entered on either the sales receipts or the invoices forms. Invoices are for sales you make on credit where the buyer will pay you later. Most livestock sales are cash sales where payments received at the time of the sale and those are entered on the sales receipts form. So let's enter a sale for 40 head of the stock or calves. Remember, we bought a total of 100 calves, but for this transaction, QuickBooks will charge off the average purchase cost of just 40 of them as a cost of resale livestock purchases. The remaining 60 cattle will still show up as an inventory for the resale stocker cattle item and as an asset on the farm's balance sheet reports. In other words, the purchase cost of the remaining unsold 60 head of cattle won't be charged off or deducted as an expense until later when those calves are sold. Also, if we wanted to look again at an inventory valuation detail report, we can see now that we have the two purchases entered earlier and also the sale of 40 head of cattle we have just now entered. The biggest benefit from using the inventory part item type comes at tax time. All you need to do to have a total for the year's resale item sales and associated purchase cost is print a profit and loss report or by using QuickBooks' income tax report. This report looks a bit strange because it doesn't have the usual range of different kinds of income and expenses in it, but it does show the sales and purchase cost of the resale livestock that were sold during the year. You can use this information directly for tax preparation without spending any more time than it takes just to open the report. Okay, so we've looked at the basics of using QuickBooks for resale items, but as with most things, there's more to know, especially about how to handle special situations like freight and hauling charges, how to adjust for miscounted items or livestock death loss, spoilage, theft, and so on what to do if you decide to keep a resale item to use in the business instead of selling it, or how to transfer resale livestock to the breeding herd instead of selling them. Also, when you should not use a resale item for purchases of the same kind of resale property. And then, too, there are tips about organizing the chart of accounts and the items list for better reporting. Volume 3 of the QuickBooks Farm Accounting Cookbook series deals with all of these details and more. You can find it at goflagship.com and at amazon.com. Thanks for watching.